Today, in a troubled world, the people search for a new spirit of brotherhood and hope, of integrity, justice, and understanding. These are the principles of brotherhood and the annual observance of Brotherhood Week. One could not have a more worthy goal than the National Conference of Christians and Jews, who, in cooperation with NBC, present a panel discussion casing a community which will feature the Montclair, New Jersey audit and other communities' self-appraisal surveys on the problems of bigotry and intolerance. Participants in this discussion will be Leo Nijelski, former chairman of the Montclair Forum, Walter White, executive secretary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also a member of the Wilkie Memorial Board, and Leo M. Chern, executive secretary of the Research Institute of America and vice president of Freedom House. All three speakers are members of the board of the National Citizens Council on Civil Rights. Our moderator is Edward J. Heffron, director of media relations for the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Mr. Heffron. The reason we are gathered here today is that this is Brotherhood Week. This annual observance was inaugurated 15 years ago by the National Conference of Christians and Jews on the suggestion of the late Monsignor Hugh McMenamin of Denver. The National Conference is dedicated to the establishment of a social order in which the religious ideals of brotherhood shall become the standard of human relationships. This is the language of the NCCJ bylaws. The religious ideals of brotherhood are universal. They embrace all who are created in the image and likeness of God. This ideal is religious and has its roots in the Judeo-Christian tradition. It is therefore much older than the American experiment, but it is very much an American idea too. The unique value of the American concept of democracy is that it seeks not merely to protect the people from the possible excesses of their rulers, which is a great good in itself, but that it goes beyond this and seeks to protect the individual from the possible excesses of the people. It guarantees rights to the minority as against the majority, even to a minority of one. The heart of this doctrine is expressed in the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal, it says, and are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights. This is but another way of expressing the religious ideals of brotherhood, the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God. The Founding Fathers rightly felt that the dignity of man entitled the individual to rights even as against the majority of his fellows. If so, such rights had to come from some source above and beyond the majority. For what the majority gave, the majority could take away. If they wanted to postulate rights which could be truly unalienable, that is, which could not lawfully be taken away by any human agency, such rights could only come from God. So that is precisely what the Founding Fathers said. But if these rights were given to man at the moment of his creation by God, then they were given to all men created by God, and all men are created by God. Protestants, Jews, Catholics, Caucasians, Negroes, Mongoloids, Nordics, Latins, and all the rest. That is the kind of brotherhood which is enshrined in the Declaration of Independence, which says all men are created equal. That is the kind of brotherhood envisioned in the bylaws of the National Conference of Christians and Jews, which aims at the establishment of the religious ideals of brotherhood. That is the kind of brotherhood which Brotherhood Week was designed to celebrate and to seek. There is no blinking the fact that this kind of brotherhood does not yet prevail in this country or anywhere else. The malady of prejudice and discrimination is a long way from being completely cured. Now, any good doctor will tell you that the necessary first step to curing any malady is diagnosis. During the past few years, there have been some interesting experiments in the way of diagnosing the extent and the severity of prejudice and discrimination in a number of American communities. These undertakings are called community audits or community self-evaluations or similar descriptive things. One of the earliest and most celebrated of these community studies was that made in Montclair, New Jersey, under the title, The Montclair Community Audit. The National Conference of Christians and Jews felt it would be interesting and helpful this Brotherhood Week to get a few of the experts on the Montclair Audit and on other audits together to discuss what was done, how it was done, and with what results. The three members of this panel are admirably fitted for such a task. 
I am first going to call on Leo M. Chern for a few remarks on community audits in general. Mr. Chern is Executive Secretary of the Research Institute of America and Vice President of Freedom House. Mr. Chern, speaking from Washington. Mr. Heffern, I suppose the uh, two words that roll most easily from our tongues are brotherhood and democracy. The purpose of the community audit or community inventory is to find out just how much brotherhood there actually is within our community. How much democracy? What is the actual state of our social health? How well are we behaving toward each other? The problem has become infinitely more important and increasingly difficult, not because our behavior is any worse than it was formerly. I think our behavior has been improving and progressively, but because life in the cities of America has become increasingly difficult, more and more complex as the cities grow, as people lose real fundamental contact with each other. Our uh, problems have become uh, complicated by other factors. Uh, the shift in populations produced, for example, by the war. Uh, more folks moved into California as a result of the requirement of war production than actually crossed the Rockies, the full length of the Rockies, in the 50 years prior to that time. Uh, one of the additional problems that increases the need we have for knowing ourselves and how our own community behaves is the fact that an entire world today looks to American behavior as a test of American sincerity. Yeah. We make protestations on many levels about many things. We mean the things we say. But there's a very real question as to how well we practice some of the things we genuinely believe. And it is through the process of a close examination of our own individual community that we first of all begin to understand what the relationship is between our belief and our practice. Once we know where we succeed and where we fail, then we're on all very much better footing uh, where remedy or improvement is involved. Uh, I'd also emphasize, though I can only do it briefly, that the insecurity of modern living, uh, produced in large measure by the machine, by technical inventions, by uh, the assembly line method of production, by size and giant character of our communities, uh, also increases the need for our closely examining our behavior. Now, I know that, that Walter White is in a very good position to uh, make detailed comment on a number of these things, and I'd like to throw it back to you, Mr. Heffern, so that uh, we may hear from you and Mr. White on, on uh, these problems. Thank you, Mr. Chern. Before we get into the actual details of what went on in Montclair and how, I think, as you do, that we should hear a few more observations on community audits in general from Mr. White. Walter White is secretary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and a member of the board of Wilkie Memorial. Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. Heffern. There is no issue on which human beings and particularly Americans are more emotional than this question of civil and human rights. Part of that uh, emotional response is due to ignorance, fear, Part of it is due to the uh, apprehension that any change in the status quo might limit the amount of money earned or the security of each group uh, living in any given American community. We are a little afraid of what might happen to our ways of life. I remember a story that Sinclair Lewis told me once about the reaction to his uh, very successful novel, Babbitt when he said all the Babbitts of the United States said to themselves, what an ex excellent and interesting and true picture of the chap who lives next door. Most of us are more concerned about the shortcomings or the alleged shortcomings of our neighbors than we are about our own weaknesses. Now, audits, I think, are tremendously important. 
It's necessary for us to find out what the facts are so that we can substitute knowledge for prejudice or, 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 or just sheer ignorance. But it's necessary for us to audit, to know what the facts are, but that is only the first step. It's necessary to look at the, uh, the facts, but then we must proceed to do something about it. Take, for example, the American Negro. He is the most probed figure in American life. He's the guinea pig of the American social scientist. For years, we've been making studies of the Negro and the Negro problem, so-called. But most of the time, we take those studies and stick them on library shelves, and they have little effect on the community. I hope that we will make these audits, not only in the cities where they have been completed and where they are now in process, but that we will extend the process and then on the basis of that knowledge proceed to look into our own hearts and into the patterns of employment, of housing, of voting, of job opportunity for all people, each in his, uh, in his own community, and then fit it into the national pattern. We're going to see the result of this emotionalism next Monday when they will start in the United States Senate what may be the most lasting and the most terrible and the most vitriolic filibuster of all time. Namely, a filibuster led by Southern Democrats and surreptitiously aided by some Northern Republicans and, and Democrats to prevent amendment of the Senate rules so that uh, the Senate will be unable to do anything to give federal aid towards correction of some of these evils. Think of it, therefore, in terms of the audits of our local communities and audits of our national pattern so that we may understand what is the broad gap between what we say we believe in when we talk about democracy and what we actually do. Incidentally, Mr. Heffern, one or two people, even since we came into the studio, are a little puzzled about the title of this broadcast, Casing Your Community. Perhaps you'd better tell them also just what that means. Well, I suppose that the major idea was to get a title that would be small enough to fit into a newspaper listing and one that would uh, arouse a little curiosity. Anybody familiar with the Argo of the Underworld would know very well, of course, what casing a bank meant and might at the same time apply the same meaning to that of casing a community. Uh, in my opinion, a, a very admirable job of casing was done uh, in uh, the instance of Montclair, New Jersey. And I think at this point, we ought to have a few details on the Montclair audit. We are fortunate in having as a member of this panel the number one authority on this particular audit, the man who, as I understand it, conceived and masterminded this famous community self-survey, uh, Leo Nijelski. Mr. Nijelski is president of Nijelski and Company, management councils, former chairman of the Montclair Forum, and a member of the board of the National Citizens Council on Civil Rights. Mr. Nijelski. I, <clears throat> I've been asked several times whether the Montclair audit uh, is the only type of community study that has been made. Um, I want to add at the very outset that it is not. There are some classic examples of studies made by social scientists. Robert Lynn and his wife made a very exhaustive study of Muncie, Indiana, and the report was published under the title of Middletown. John Dollard, Professor John Dollard of Yale, just completed a study in the South. Lloyd Warner, uh, in his group at the University of Chicago, did some very uh, wonderful work in uh, a New England community. That's one type of a community study that has been done in the past. Another type is a uh, study that is planned by social scientists and carried out by citizens with cooperation of the social scientists. The Fisk University uh, sponsored study of Minneapolis and St. Paul, which I understand recently won a, an award uh, from the National Conference of Christians and Jews is a good example of this kind of study. The Northtown study, which was planned by uh, uh, Dr. Merrill and a group of social scientists, is still another. The Montclair audit differs from these studies in that it was planned uh, by uh, an amateur and carried out by amateurs, carried out by citizens, so to speak. And uh, it grew up quite spontaneously. 
uh, in Montclair. I happen to be chairman of the Montclair Forum at the time, and we're planning a local program. And uh, at uh, the latter part of the year, I heard that the report of the President's Committee on Civil Rights was uh, being issued, and we decided that that would provide an excellent framework against which to measure the civil rights in Montclair. Uh, since the Montclair Forum is not an action group, the cooperation of other groups in the community was solicited and obtained, and the American Veterans Committee spearheaded the development of the audit. The uh, basic idea that was established at the very outset was that we were not in an action phase. We wanted to know what the facts were. We uh, realized that many of the action programs that have developed in politics and in various other activities in our community communities were based on uh, biased views. That is, that one side or the other was stressed. What we wanted to do was to consider the pluses and minuses. We wanted to clarify ourselves on just what the problems were. And the other broad framework that we established was that we were operating as members of a democratic society, a member, as uh, democratic Americans in that we had respect for each other as human beings and uh, that we were not going to try to put anybody on the spot at that particular point. The um, important thing that happened after we got underway, uh, the about 50 people participated in the audit. These people acted as a group, criticizing each other and uh, amplifying each other's uh, information and responses, and that proved to be a very interesting thing because I have had a feeling for a long time that what we need in our communities is a greater amount of participation that happened in this particular case. The other thing was that uh, as people worked on the audit and they saw these tremendous problems, of, or at least problems that they visualized as tremendous problems, were made up of small things, small things that they could do something about. That was uh, important also because it led to decisions on the part of the participants to do something about these problems after the audit was completed. The reports were presented at the, at the forum meeting by the individual chairman who supervised particular phases of the audit, and we had a very interesting meeting. It was a tense meeting, not in the sense of conflict, but in the sense of discovery. Uh, one of the members of the audience got up toward the close of the meeting and said, this is one of the most stimulating experiences I have ever had in a public gathering. Uh, Mr. Najelski, I, th uh, I think it'd be interesting, too, to, uh, to in bearing out what you've said, to point out that the many other communities which have already conducted similar self-studies uh, have experienced precisely the same reaction. Uh, I don't know how widely known it is, for example, that six towns in New York State and in three sections of New York City, a similar studies have been conducted. That in two communities in New Jersey, uh, the uh, citizens are already undertaking such surveys, and in one city of New Jersey, Westfield, uh, they're already reporting substantial gains in, in civil rights practices. Uh, one of the cities planning an audit in Ohio is, is now seeking to pass a city ordinance officially establishing the survey and a continuing mayor's committee on unity to follow up the study with an action program such as Walter White uh, suggested. Uh, the audit programs, uh, one of the really heartening things about them, is that they have spread so quickly from one end of the country to the other, from the East Coast to the West Coast. And this effort to really learn about ourselves and have citizens participate in the process of learning is, is catching fire. There's one thing I'd like to add to that uh, that's also on the affirmative side. And that is that these audits are discovering in so many instances a greater area of agreement uh, than they are of disagreement. For example, there's a study released this morning, uh, made right here in New York City. There are a lot of things pointed out, a lot of evils. Uh, the continuation of racial segregation in housing, 
uh, discrimination in jobs. But as against that, uh, there are remarkable instances of people living and working and playing together in complete unity in New York City. And I think that's true not only of a great metropolitan city like ours, but in other parts of the country as well. Well, we certainly found that in Montclair. There were many favorable aspects uh, about civil rights that the citizens were not aware of, that they had a right to be proud about. For example, our high school does an excellent job of uh, bringing about opportunities for inter-participation of various groups of people, in the, uh, groups of students in the high school. The, uh, in general, there's a favorable attitude on the part of the merchants in the community that was to be commended. Uh, there are many other instances, and the plus, uh, considering the plus factors as well as the minuses, minuses does bring this out. Well, I'd, I uh, would like to agree uh, emphatically with both Mr. Najewski and, and uh, Mr. White that it is important if we're to correct some of the things we're not doing well that we emphasize not only the things we should feel guilty about but uh, frequently and not sufficiently guilty about but should also emphasize uh, those aspects of our living in which we might well take pride and of which we don't know and the uh, community audit has this double possibility this double function it gives us both the opportunity to examine uh, our uh, inactivity our apathy and our ill health and of that we have the opportunity and we must feel a a decent guilt and shame but it also gives us the uh, the, the healthy opportunity for pride. Uh, the, uh, the community audit is not a scolding device. It's a fact-finding device. And as a fact-finding device, it's particularly effective in enabling us to correct some things that we might not uh, be so quick to correct under the, uh, the impetus uh, solely of scolding. I think, uh, Mr. Chern, that that's very well brought out by the report uh, that was published in this morning's press of the audit taken here in New York and previously referred to by Mr. White. Uh, incidentally, in connection with that uh, audit, I should like to point out uh, that it was uh, uh, conceived and arranged by Merrill Dwyer, acting in his capacity as chairman uh, of the New York area for Brotherhood Week. I should also like to say that... Uh, Another re community report was issued uh, last week, last Tuesday, actually. Uh, that's this week, isn't it? Another report was issued on Tuesday in Omaha, which again, uh, the uh, committee making the report had been appointed by the Brotherhood Week chairman in that area, and uh, the report was made under the auspices of the local division of the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Uh, there's one question I should like to ask at this point, if I may. Uh, that has to do with whether these surveys are uh, solely of practices or do you also seek to gauge or shall we say case the attitudes of uh, citizens in the community? Uh, I sh think I should like to ask Mr. White to speak to that. Well, lest this broadcast be construed or believed by th those who are listening to us as evidence that the problem has been solved, there's nothing to be done about it. I would like to point out that they are, the important thing about them is that they do indicate the weaknesses in our democratic structure, and they provide an answer in many instances to the question which increasingly is being asked, what can I do about it? Uh, if I may bring in a personal experience, I just saw an analysis yesterday of letters which came to town hall as a result of a broadcast discussing racial segregation uh, not long ago. Eighty-seven percent of the people who wrote in, some 3,000 of them, uh, favored the broadcast. They were glad to have the issue which has been dodged hitherto discussed. And so many of them said, what can I do about it? I believe the community audits helps to prove that. Uh, and to supply the answer to it. Well, it did stimulate a great deal of activity in Montclair. For example, our hospitals, as a result of the audit, uh, I think indirectly at least, have admitted uh, Negroes to their uh, full courtesy privileges. In other words, they can follow their patients and into the hospital and operate and treat them. I think you're too modest, uh, 
uh, Nijelski, I, I think you could uh, very uh, well have said that that was a direct result of the audit and a fairly inevitable one. Well, we don't want to uh, use the audit as a precious device, as a uh, pressure device, Mr. Chair. No, but uh, the, the very existence of fact, uh, as uh, publicly acknowledged fact, as distinguished from the kind of fact Walter White talked of before, which gets on a library shelf and is read by a handful of social scientists. If the public is aware of certain kinds of fact, action is automatic in certain respects. Now, I'm not making it too easy, but let's not make it too difficult. That I is think... correct. For example, the YMCA in Montclair had a uh, practice which had developed uh, merely because one of the branches happened to have uh, been surrounded by a Negro population and became the uh, Negro YMCA. Uh, there was no conscious uh, segregation, but it just grew up as a matter of practice. Well, well the Mr. audit gave the board an opportunity to reconsider that policy and to uh, modify it so that the Negroes could uh, participate in the central Y and to uh, um, move freely between one or the other. Uh, Mr. Nijelski, uh, uh, most of the discussion to this point has uh, revolved about the question of discrimination as practiced against Negroes, and uh, that's very understandable because I think that is an outstanding and easily observable uh, fact in uh, American life in most communities. Uh, lest our listeners get the idea, however, that the Montclair audit or any of these other audits uh, devoted its attention exclusively to this area of uh, human relations, I should like to ask you if it is not true uh, that all kinds of human relations were studied there, between all groups, cultural, religious, and so forth. All kinds of groups were studied, and the discrimination was not limited to Negroes. It applied in other instances. I mention this because the time uh, does not permit them to um, be developed to a greater extent. I might say, uh, in passing, was time, because time is growing short, that if uh, any groups uh, want to... Uh, get more information about how to conduct audits. Uh, the National Citizens Council on Civil Rights, uh, whose offices are 20 West 40th Street, New York City, will be glad to supply information. Do you have any last yes, remarks? Uh, yes, one thing I want to add also is the fact that these audits are removing the holier than thou attitude which the North has always had towards the South. It's true that we still have lynching and disfranchisement and Jim Crow in the South. But the South is not only the only denier of civil rights, uh, there are also some affirmative things happening there. The attitude of students, the attitude of church women in the South, of veterans, of trade unions, which has resulted uh, in the admission of qualified Negroes to state universities in a number of southern states, all of which believe, uh, constitute, in my opinion, a gratifying growth in decency in America, which examining our own practices at home is going to accelerate tremendously to the benefit of America as a whole. Thank you very much, Mr. White, for this affirmative note, which seems to me is a very fine plane on which to come to approach the conclusion of our program. Uh, in this discussion today, we have heard from several experts in the matter of community self-studies relating to the problems of prejudice and discrimination, and I think uh, it has become apparent, as it must uh, antecedently have been, uh, that such studies uh, are as necessary to the social scientist in trying to correct such maladies as those we have been discussing as diagnosis is to the physician before he starts practicing his therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard a discussion on Casing a Community with Leo Nijelski, former chairman of the Montclair Forum, Walter White, executive secretary of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and Leo M. Chern, executive secretary of the Research Institute of America. Edward J. Heffron, director of media relations for the National Conference of Christians and Jews, was the moderator. Let us take to our hearts the message of the discussion heard today. This is Brotherhood Week, so let's all spread the word. Don't listen to or repeat gossip about any group of people, not only this week, but the year round. That's being a real American. This is NBC, 
the National Broadcasting Company.